you have a newborn baby the baby got delivered 5 hours before because of uh, abnormal swelling in the back the maternity team is asking you for an opinion already the pediatrician has seen the patient and uh, examined the general conditions uh, when you examine the baby the baby is nicely built male baby passes urine passed urine already extra genital examination is normal but there is a uh, swelling in the lower sacrum which is soft to touch what may be the diagnosis i'm concerned that this may be a myelomeningeal seal spinal dysraphism in this child okay what are the urology implications for this child uh, the urology implication that it may be associated with uh, a neuropathic bladder um, either uh, bladder overactivity or underactive bladder depending on the level of the lesion uh, so the main concern is that uh, um ability to uh, empty the bladder completely and possibility of hydronephrosis uh, and deterioration of renal function okay so the lesion is present in the level of the sacrum so what may be the pathogenesis the the, the cause for the spinal dysraphism yeah or, cause yeah usually a spinal dysraphism or my usual seal will will happen due to folate deficiency during pregnancy and then there is incomplete effusion of the uh, neural tube um, and associated with uh, a neurological symptom sometimes associated with uh, a hydrocephalus and muscle of the uh, child and some skeletal abnormality as well okay so this patient's lesion is at the level of the sacrum so what features you may expect as the child grows how will you counsel the parents so for this child since he is passing urine uh, at the moment uh, normally i want to um, check his kidney function in 2 uh, to 3 days um, and make sure that his kidney function are uh, normal uh, his management will be a multidisciplinary team management in, involving the new uh, pediatrician urologist um, orthopedic surgeon and the neurosurgeon Uh, if his blood is fine and his obs are fine then i need to arrange for him to have an ultrasound Uh, in six week time, and then I will review him in the clinic with the result. Why do you want to do the blitz after three days? Because initially, in the first forty uh, eight hour uh, of life, uh, the uh, a blood tests for kidney function in the fetus will reflect the maternal uh, renal function, um, and also there will be a relative dehydration in the first forty eight hours. So I prefer to postpone the blood test up to um, three days. Okay. the blitz were normal and um, the ultrasound in 6 weeks showed presence of right sided hydroerythronephrosis grade 1 to 2 left side normal bladder is emptying comfortably on maturation how are you going to further follow up this patient so in this child um, i will start him on a prophylactic antibiotic uh, since there is a hydronephrosis and i will arrange uh, for uh, uh, mcug for further evaluation of the hydronephrosis when will you do that um, i will do it as soon as possible how will you do in a say two month old baby uh, it will be um, a little bit challenging regarding the voiding so we will insert a catheter we inject the contrast material inside and uh, take uh, an image at uh, full bladder and then we take the catheter uh, out and we try to stimulate the child to void uh, or sometime we apply a uh, gentle pressure in the suprapubic area try to empty the bladder and to see if there is any reflux is there any role for general anesthesia for this procedure I think general anesthesia we use it usually in older children. Uh, we can use in this child as well, but um, I think it's it's a little bit. Uh, okay, what kind of catheter you will insert? Uh, for this child at this age, it will be a feeding tube, size six or eight. Okay, micturating history erythrogram is not convincingly showing us any reflex on the right side. How are you going to follow this child further? so if there is no reflux and there is a hydronephrosis then the possibility is that it could be a puj or a vuj um, uh, obstruction 
So I will arrange uh, for this uh, child um, to have a, a MAG-3 and the optimal uh, age to have a MAG-3 usually is around three months uh, when the kidney function mature. Okay, MAG-3 renogram shows no evidence of any obstruction uh, both at the level of PUJ and VUJ. Possibly the ultrasound finding of hydronephrosis is an incidental one and getting resolved by itself. The strict renal functions were quite acceptable. What may be the long-term prognosis for the patient with this uh, meningomyelocele? So, those patients the uh, long term, uh, there is a concern about uh, uh, having a neuropathic bladder with its sequelae, which include uh, incomplete emptying of the bladder associated infection, uh, and also about uh, deterioration of renal function. But since this child is not having a uh, reflux, uh, and his kidney function is fine, maybe the suspicion is low. Um, I can arrange for a urodynamic for this uh, patient to see the baseline status of the bladder. Uh, we can arrange that at the age of six months. So how will you do urodynamics in a six month old baby? So we will insert uh, uh, the urethral uh, uh, tube, uh, which is used for measuring the bladder pressure and uh, for uh, inflation. Uh, and also I will insert a small tube in the uh, rectum um, and then maybe we are looking mainly for the filling phase rather than the voiding phase. Uh, in the filling phase we are looking for the um, capacity of the bladder, looking for any uh, reduced compliance, intrusal overactivity. Um, the avoiding phase will not be um, uh, much useful in this child at this age. Okay, so what findings you are expecting in urodynamics? Um, again, so ac according to the level of the uh, of the injury in this child, since it is in the sacrum, I expect that he may have a form of um, hypocontractile or a contractile bladder uh, with large bladder capacity and uh, no detrusal of our activity or reduced compliance. If the level is higher, then I expect the child to have a reduced uh, compliance, detrusal of our activity uh, and high filling pressure. Okay, urodynamic shows uh, the detrusor is hypocontractile and the uh, patient is not emptying the bladder completely with a residual urine of 80 ml. What is your further plan? So for this child, uh, we need to learn the parent how to start self-intermittent catheterization uh, to ensure complete emptying uh, of the bladder with uh, regular follow-up in the clinic. How will you teach intermittent self-catheterization in a six-month-old baby? So we, with the help of, uh, of our nurse, we will um, uh, show the parent how to use a small size uh, uh, feeding tube um, to um, insert it and empty the bladder. Um, usually we do it three to four times per day. And according to much, how much they drain each time, uh, we can arrange further um, follow-up. Do you aware of the neurosurgeon's opinion, what they will do when they are planning to do the surgery? Usually the neurosurgeon, they are planning to close the defect um, as soon as possible when the child just fit enough to have a general anesthesia. Um, and uh, after that, usually his main problem is with the after closure of the defect, uh, he developed hydrocephalus and he may need to have a, a, a shunt at some point. Can you give an example of the shunt? I usually VP shunt, ventricular peritoneal shunt. Okay. What may be the long-term prognosis for this patient? As of now, the patient is doing fine, no major concerns. Uh, usually, um, the neurological defect in those children are not progressive. Um, however, um, kidney function or uh, urological deterioration may be progressive and uh, uh, some of them, they have a problem with the continence, uh, recurrent urinary tract infection, incomplete emptying of the bladder, and possible deterioration of the renal function um, in the future. Okay, so this patient has got hypocontractile bladder. Let us take an, another patient with meningomyelocele at a different level, affecting the upper motor neuron, which results in lack of compliance and detrusor overactivity. Is there anything extra you do for this patient? Yeah, for this patient, we can uh, try to increase the bladder capacity and reduce the uh, pressure by starting the child on anticholinergic medication with or without self-intermittent catheterization. 
uh, if the anticholinergic medication are not uh, useful, then we can go to the next step, which is uh, intravasical uh, cortex uh, injection. And the last uh, resort is to consider uh, augmentation cystoplasty. What is your choice of anticholinergic? Uh, oxybutynin, we can give it at a dose of uh, 0.2 milligram per kg, two to three times daily. What is the dose of Botox for children? Um, I am not quite sure. Okay, that's okay. And um, so at what stage you will think that this patient will need Botox? How are you going to monitor the oxybutynin intake? Um, by by uh, monitoring the, ch the child, so if there is deterioration in his kidney function, um, um, worsening of the hydronephrosis and the urodynamic parameters, including reduced compliance, better overactivity and high flowing pressure, are still um, uh, not improving, uh, then this patient needs to go to the next step, which is Botox injection. Good. So, okay, we'll stop there. Because from now onwards, if we are discussing anything like augmentation cystoplasty, it could be almost like the adult uh, female urology scenarios, what we discussed. I don't think there will be any major difference, except mm -hmm. that we need to monitor the child closely for possible early um, CKD, etc. Regarding the dose for the Botox, any child above 15 years or above say even 12 years they can still have 100 international units but if the children are smaller than that we need to reduce the dose accordingly mainly because of the absence of enough bladder volume and uh, if we are giving say 100 international units for very small children like three year old or five year old it can result in the need for intermittent catheterization and patient won't have the spontaneous void at least in the early few months. So we can tailor based upon the Botox response next time how much international units patient may require. Okay? Okay. Good. You have any other questions before we complete? Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, confused about how to do the MCUG in a very small child, two months or three months. Yeah. Uh, the main thing is we need to see how suitable the child will be fit for the general anesthesia. If the child is suitable for anesthesia, uh, we are more interested in the filling phase. So you can keep the child under anesthesia, you can fill the bladder, you will get the complete filling phase. The child can't be asked to void, so you can't get the appropriate uh, voiding pictures. Suprapubic pressure will tell us about possible reflex but it won't uh, directly tell us the exact patients, uh, say p at q max and uh, real flow rate, etc. I understand that uh, smaller children, it's difficult to put to anesthesia. So if the patient is not fit for anesthesia or not big enough for anesthesia, we can even wait and do the MCUG. So I was expecting you to bring the MCUG and anesthesia because filling phase, you will get the same information as an awake patient. What if we, what if he's, uh, if he's awake, uh, and we can do the MCUG uh, while he's awake? Of course. We... Yeah, if the, if the patient is awake, patient is acceptable, accepting the catheter, uh, you can do the full MCUG in the awake, uh, both filling and voiding phase. If the child can void on command, that will give you a excellent voiding picture and also the readings. Sometimes the child may be old enough to give you a command on void uh, obeying but the child will be so anxious won't allow you to place a catheter so there are some instances where we need to put the patient to anesthesia just to place the catheter and then you can even um, uh, awake the patient from anesthesia and do the filling phase and the voiding phase or at least the voiding phase when the patient is awake so that you'll get the correct representation of the voiding picture yeah and another question is that when the patient have a, a posterior thral valve, uh, after we do the MCUG and we take the catheter out, we should put it back at the end of the procedure of the MCUG. Yes. So the reason to remove the catheter in the voiding phase is to remove the artifact due to the catheter and also to demonstrate the posterior thral valve appropriately. And uh, once we demonstrate it, maybe by video, cystoerythrogram, and also once we have the good pictures, uh, it's always better to keep the patient on a catheter till the patient get appropriate valve ablation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Well done.
best wishes i'm sure everything will be absolutely clear before the exam feel free to call me anytime i will try to reply as soon as possible mostly i'll be able to pick your call after the exam give me a call in the evening we will chat on the scenarios thank you thank you very much mr dashakno i really appreciate your help and support during all this long journey thank okay. you very much it's my pleasure best wishes keep in touch thank you very much thank Good. you bye bye